welcome you back to another hour uh, of power in God's word, God's holy word. I'd like to say hello to everybody and praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for another Sunday, another opportunity, uh, not only to get closer to you, to get more right with you, uh, but to be here in fellowship with you and for you. Um, I'd like to say hello to everyone in Christ out there, and hopefully that there be at least one out there that not be in Christ um, that'll be that's tuning in right now. Uh, please hang on for the most important hour of your life. I guarantee you that you will highly benefit from this. And I'm not talking about houses, money, and cars, but you will benefit on a higher level than even that. Um, if you just stick around for this next hour here, um, I'd like to thank God the Father who planned this prestigious and awesome moment here, this privilege here, um, this life that I have up to this point right now. I'd like to thank God the Father for it, um, putting a purpose into my life here to enable me with his grace to wake up and experience living as opposed to surviving and living a life with a beautiful purpose and the purpose being that he's using me to uh, share his word of life uh, to any and all in this world that desire to change their life from what it is to what God says it can be. Um, and I like to thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, God the Son, who executed God's plan to perfection without sin, for he is sinless. God the Son came into the world, this world, uh, almost 2,000 years ago, and he fulfilled uh, God the Father's plan uh, by sacrificing himself upon a cross and in doing so he took all mankind's sins past present and future to the cross and washed it away it was never to be held up again in the uh, throne of grace before God the Father and be washed away and all someone would have to do has just come as a sinner and ask, open up their heart and their life and ask Jesus to come in because from their heart, they believe that he died on that cross for their sins, past, present, and future. And on the third day, he rose bodily uh, to give us a hope that that which he promised on Friday, eternal life, believing on that by faith, rising up on that Sunday he showed he has the power over sin, Satan, and death and that he is indeed Messiah he is indeed healer and deliverer he is indeed who scripture says he is and shall always be and I pray that in the name of Jesus someone in this hour cross over extend their hand and open up their heart and say Lord Jesus Christ accept me into your kingdom I come to you as a sinner and I know you forgave me of all my sins and I just ask that you just save me from my sins save me so that I can have a not guilty verdict before your throne of grace and then use me through the Holy Spirit each and every day as you raise me up make me grow a little more like you in mind and heart to be used to help another person come to Jesus Christ. Um, I'd like to thank God, the Holy Spirit, the captain, as the Lord declared and showed me, of uh, the mighty ship called the body of Christ that he sails. He leads guys in the wrecks to the seashores of glory to be with the Lord of glory one day. And he holds it and keeps it together. And he is the captain. And i like to thank uh Dr. Thomas Blackwell, CEO of KTYM, for allowing me to have the privilege to be here to uh, declare, uh, to share God's word. 
uh, because it is an honor, it is a privilege to do this, and you know, it's not something to be taken lightly, and not something to be just overlooked. You know, it could be somebody else sitting here, uh, but the Lord has me here, and He's uh, been kind and generous enough to open that door again. So I thank Him as well. Um, I'd like to thank my 90-year-old mama, uh, having her challenges right now, and my older sister, my little sister, and the rest of the family. I'd like to thank Mary, Stephanie. I'd like to thank Delia, uh, and this little 15-year. <laughs> 15 year old Hannah Rudder down in Texas, uh, and all those in Texas that I've met over the months, uh, especially the little kids. Um, but nonetheless, uh, let us uh, go to the Lord in prayer before we start. Briefly, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity, this hour of fellowship with you. Um, to learn more about you, to get closer to you, and hopefully somebody to make that change, that decision for changing their life, for accepting Jesus as their Savior and their Lord, and uh, coming into the body of Christ and uh, being led back home to you, oh Lord. We pray that you can open up our minds and pour in something in each one of us, meant for us, Put it in our hearts and through the Holy Spirit, use it to plant and water upon other people's lives who surely need it like we once did. And this we pray in the name of Jesus and say, amen, amen. Well, uh, we've been embarking on, since January, we're going to be coming to a close, if not this after today, perhaps next Sunday, uh, according to how the Lord desires to do it. Um, I'm going to be coming to a close on the theme of where are you? The Lord is asking, where are you? Um, and, you know, he said, Joseph, let the people know of a good subtitle today, under where are you? And that is, where are you going? And the Lord has... You know, I had, like I said, old, my old pastor uh, for over a decade always said, include and say we. But this theme has been a personal theme where everyone who is listening needs to self reflect and answer the question to God Almighty. When He says, Where are you? You need to look up and say, Here's where I am. If you're a Christian, you can easily answer, okay? But if you are outside of the door, if you are a sinner, not saved by faith in Jesus Christ, then the Lord is truly asking, when he says, where are you? Do you recognize where your soul is right now before God? Do you recognize the peril that your soul is in before God because you do not have Jesus as your Lord, personal Lord and Savior? And he said, as a subtitle, ask, where are you going? Where are you is step one, but where are you going is what the Lord is asking. And we're going to be... Uh, uh, focusing on Luke chapter 15 is nothing new. It is perhaps one of the most famous parables uh, of Jesus Christ. Uh, very well known area preached probably tens, hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of times throughout the ages. Um, we're only going to do verses 11 through 24. It's the story of the lost son or as people know the prodigal son. Uh, we're not going to be focusing on 25 down, which focuses on the other brother. We're going to focus on strictly the prodigal son. But the Lord showed me something. Um, going back to Luke 14, um, there were a couple of points that stood out that kind of uh, clicked with what's going on with the prodigal. 
Jesus had a purpose with everything he said, taught, everything he did, all the miracles. There was a purpose with everything that Jesus did, whether it be through teaching, pre, you know, preaching, or through healings and miracles. There was a purpose. And in the chapter 14, uh, we see that in the beginning, uh, there was a chief Pharisee that Jesus went to visit on the Sabbath. Uh, and it says here in verse 14, the end of it, they said they watched him. So there was a purpose why these Pharisees, and it happened on a couple of occasions that they got together with Jesus um, and I'm sure there was more than just one Pharisee there because they tend to hang in, 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 as a clique. Um, and they watched Jesus wherever he went. Um, but nonetheless, there was someone that was afflicted, physically afflicted. And Jesus asked them, and uh, uh, speaking of the, uh, the Pharisees and also the, the religious lawyers, he asked them, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? Is it, a, is it right to do good on the Sabbath? Okay. Now, I remember when Peter and John were arrested and they told the Pharisees, you know, uh, you know, uh, is it right to obey man or God? You know, um, but here he is, he's asking this and they stay quiet. And Jesus took him, healed him, and let him go. And then, before anything could ensue of a response from them, he answered them saying, which one of them, if they had an ox or any other type of animal, uh, uh, on the Sabbath, if they hit a hole, they, they, they fell into a hole, would not go out and pull them out, which is work. And they were not to work on the Sabbath. OK, um, I remember in another account in the, in the Gospels, Jesus approached uh, some of the others, uh, Pharisees and people and said, well, uh, on the eighth day, the law gave you circumcision for a male. And if that day fell on eighth day fell on the Sabbath, you would go and perform the circumcision. That's work. You know, the hypocrisy of the Pharisees, you know, such as in John 5, to jump on the man who was healed. 38 years, I believe, this man was lame at the pool, uh, and daily he was brought there, um, looked in for a, a divine healing and deliverance. And on this day that he got it, rather than the Pharisees rejoicing, because they knew this man was there. I mean, everybody had that known 38 years. Uh, the guy must have had VIP status at that point. Rather than praising God for seeing him walking, you know, they jumped on him basically saying, who told you you could walk with your mat on this day? And they were that petty. Yet, they would go out and save an animal. They would go out and perform a uh, circumcision that fell upon their child on the eighth day. So it was a bit of hypocrisy. So Jesus, the one thing about this was in verse 5, he spoke of one ox or one ass, a donkey. Okay, one. Keep that in mind. Okay. And the teaching, verses 7 through 14 of four, uh, uh, Luke 14, Jesus' teaching on humility, uh, there was another thing that stood out here where he spoke, obviously, he who exalts himself, uh, will be humble because God resists those that are arrogant and proud in, in, in that fashion and the ones that humble themselves shall be lifted up Peter attested to that I believe it's first Peter chapter 5 um, but there was one thing that he said here in verse 12 speaking of um, the humility okay um, I like this segment here when he said when you make dinner or supper don't call your friends, your brethren, your kingsmen, or your rich neighbors, uh, lest they also, you know, perhaps turn you down. But I like what he said here. He said, 13, when you make a feast, this is very key, call the poor, the maimed, the lame, and the blind. 
Okay, that's in verse 13. Also in verse 21, you see the same thing. Okay, uh, and we'll get to that in a second. But the reason I'm, I'm bringing this up because in Matthew 11, Jesus answering John the Baptist's disciples to send a message back to John the Baptist, who at this point was imprisoned by Herod. Um, and he wanted to get confirmation that Jesus was the one that was to be spoken about that was coming, which he, should, he, he obviously knew because it was revealed to him already. But sometimes tsunami circumstances in our life can bring some eh, wonder into our, into our life. But nonetheless, it was Jesus' response that was more important, not the question. He, he told him again, he reflected on the blind, the lame, the poor, um, and a couple of others, you know, leopards as well, um, that look and see, tell them what you saw with regards to what I did to them, okay? It was something about the outcast, the individual outcast that Jesus had a connection with, that he he showed and revealed that he came for. He came for a specific lame man in John 5. You know, Bartimaeus, the blind man, specific one, okay? He came for an individual. Uh, there was a lame man that was brought in the bed that was brought through the roof. Individual, one-on-one. -on -one. That's why the Lord is asking, where are you? Where are you going? Where is your soul and where is it heading? Okay, what direction are you heading? Because Jesus came for you, one on one. He's declaring this, okay? And the parable of the great banquet, which starts on verse 15 of Luke 14, I love something here. When he spoke about a certain man who uh, laid out a great feast, great supper, and invited many. <clears throat> and he sent his he sent and he sent the servant, okay? Uh and he told and he and, and the key word here was say to them, come. Jesus was to Israel saying, Come. Okay? To Israel, come. That's who he came for first and foremost. Israel, chosen nation. Okay. And they show three accounts from 18 down through 20 of how one person after another made an excuse why they couldn't come, okay? Uh, they, if God asked them, where are you, okay? Well, the first one is saying, you know, I just bought a piece of land, okay? And... I need to go and see. I need to go check things out. Business before my relationship with you. You know, if God asks them, <laughs> where are you? Do you really know where you are? This invitation is basically saying, come. You know what I'm saying? But he was heading somewhere else. You know, the second one, it was a deal with an auction. The third one was he got married. We make so many excuses uh when the Lord says come, his heart is open, his arms are open, his grace of salvation is open to you individually, one on one, Jesus and you. The Lord has revealed himself through the world that he exists. Almost 2,000 years ago that he came, okay, even though the, the world resisted, okay, he persisted and went to that cross. Okay, and through the ages, he has continued to say, come. He has continued to invite each and every one of us to that great banquet of salvation, to be at peace with him, okay, and to celebrate with him, okay, that you are saved now and you have a great banquet up ahead that's eternal. Uh, so there's a thing here where we see uh, uh, how each individual, and you know, because Israel as a nation pretty much rejected their Messiah. They rejected their God. They rejected their Savior. 
and they are stuck right now. They have no temple. They can't go back to the Old Testament ways, okay? And there will be no second Messiah because Scripture attests that even in the Old Testament, there's a crucifixion that's coming with that, that's attached to that Messiah coming. And the world does not condone crucifixion. It is banned. It is outlawed. It is in, an inhuman way of executing a human being. It will never be that again. So they can sit there and wait. Uh, uh, that's why Revelation is up ahead to show those that are there. Uh, they missed the opportunity. They will have a chance, but oh Lord, what they're going to have to go through. But nonetheless, going back to this, um, we see how he's speaking about an individual. He's talking about the Pharisees going out for one individual act, one individual animal, for one individual purpose, one individual gain. He spoke about the individuals, lame, crippled, that he once invited. Here you see an individual who bought a land, an individual with regards to an auction, an individual with regards to marriage. But then in chapter 14 and verse 23 after the servant of the master that Jesus is speaking about who had this great uh, feast laid out he said to his servant to go in verse 21 he said go okay into the streets the lanes of the cities and bring the poor here we go again the lame uh, the, the crippled the lame and the blind again we see that parallel to verse 13 and clicking with what Jesus said to John the Baptist's disciples in verse 11. Jesus had a connection with those that were downtrodden, those that were outcast in society, those that were at the bottom of the ladder socially, politically, uh, economically, in every way, in every fashion, they were at the bottom of the ladder, but to Jesus, they mattered the most, okay? And he even said this because, again, verse 23 after verse 21, when the servant came back and said that, he said, uh, and the servant said to the Lord, it is uh, done as you have commanded. He went out in, into, into the streets and he invited these four individ type of individuals. But he said uh, he did it as the, he's commanded, but there's still more room. The Lord today still has room in his holy heaven for any and everyone that wants change in their life, change for their life, a change of life, and they recognize that Jesus Christ is the one that can bring that. And it's only Jesus Christ because God is the only one that knows your heart. God is the only one that knows what torments your mind. God is the only one that knows every valley you've been in. God knows every challenge you have. God knows every obstacle you have. It is Jesus that can come into your life and wash this away. It is Jesus that can wash all your hurt away. It is Jesus that can wash all the pain and suffering that you have. And you might say, well, you know, how can somebody I don't see, he don't exist, I don't, I don't have no physical, I can't, how can he help me? He don't understand what I'm going through. He don't understand my suffering. He don't understand all these challenges. Yes, he does. Because he came in the flesh. And he had the same trials and tribulations that we have brought upon him. But he handled it in a fashion where he conquered it. He did not give in to it. He did not sin because of it. He stayed sinless. And he paved a new way from our old destructive sinful ways. Had he not paved a new way, then there'd be no need to be calling on Jesus. We have to take it by faith. Faith says, I didn't see it, but I'm going to pursue it. How many things, and I'll stop here for a second. How many things have we pursued in our life that we, didn't, we couldn't grab a hold on to? But we knew we, if in pursuing it, we could get it, okay? You know, jobs, 
as, as a male, a female, as a female, uh, a male, uh, for relationship, companionship, okay? Opportunities financially. How many of us were turned down for a, a credit for a vehicle or a car and we still pursued the unknown? We, we know that we can make this happen, okay? How many of us wanted to get into a place and we search and we search and we search. We, 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 we're searching the unknown, but we know we're going to find something. We know we're going to, in our mind, we are convinced that that which, I, I can't see it. I can't see how it's going, but I know it's going to happen. Well, if you can do that, then why can't you say the same thing about Jesus? I'm proof. I'm a living testimony of what Jesus can do okay i mean i was stuck in a well of sin and it was only jesus that drew me out okay because i kept drinking the wrong water i was drinking the water of sin of this world okay and one day after another one year after another yeah i thought i was doing good but he showed me i wasn't okay if you know that you're in the bottom of that well right now and every glass of water you have drank, okay, has been destroying you mentally, has been destroying you spiritually. And you know, you know in your heart, you want some change. You looking up, trying to find some change. Well, if you've been pursuing all these unknowns in your life, why not pursue the best unknown? And he ain't really unknown because you can, you can see the Lord right here. You can experience him right here. You can walk with him through this. This is a spiritual book. And through the Holy Spirit is where you will become enlightened about what the Lord has, uh, what the Lord is sharing through me right now. Okay? That that change can happen. Jesus is the one and the only one that can remove these thoughts that have crippled our minds, that can remove the weight that has pressed down and kept down and darkened our heart. He is the only one that can take off the mountainous loads of our soul called sin, okay, and give us the peace that we truly yearn, seek, and deserve, okay? Um, but we have to commit ourselves to wanting that change. Um, so he says here, verse 23, when uh, they, he says that there was still more room, the Lord said, well, go out into the highways. You know, right now, he has those servants in the highways and byways. I'm one of them, okay? Sharing. There's still room and there's still time. The door is open. All you have to do is walk through and appear and say, here I am, Lord. I come as a sinner. I know I am not worthy. I don't deserve this. But I, I heard that you will give me another chance. You know what? How many times have you sought out a, a second chance in your life? Well, what's the difference between a second chance and this life? And your life is right now is in the well and not give Jesus the opportunity He's willing to give you a second chance. Why not give him an opportunity if you see me? Yeah, I got all kinds of challenges. I got mental, I got challenges in my mind, things that are just pressing down on me. I got issues and, you know, I'm dealing with in my heart. You know what I'm saying? I got my own medical challenges. I got my own financial challenges. I got my own life challenges, you know, uh, but I'm here with his peace. And each and every day, I yearn to get more of it. I want to learn more about his peace because these challenges in this life are not going to stop. But I'm able to go through them like this, by faith, by faith. I pursue and I and I believe that what I'm pursuing is going to bring me to a better point on the other end. I, I have faith in that. And I sit here as a living testimony pleading with you that if he certainly can do it for me, he certainly can do it for you. There's nothing that is too far down, too far, too wide, uh, too, 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 too ahead uh, for the Lord. There's nothing he cannot handle. 
So uh, moving ahead, he said uh, in verse 23 or 14, go. He has told us that those that believe in Jesus in Matthew 28, go. Keep inviting them. So the Lord is speaking right now and inviting you, okay, one-on-one -on -one to come into this festive moment with him through Jesus Christ, by faith in Jesus Christ. Give Jesus a chance because you've given everything else a chance in your life. And many of those things that you gave a chance, you didn't see it. You didn't know. You just were hoping that it would turn out to be. Okay? So if you can do that, believing that that can, well, give Jesus a chance. Okay? He has blessings for you. And I'm not speaking house money or cars, getting you out of debt and all these other things. I'm speaking the blessings for your mind. That's where it starts. He wants to bless your mind so that you now start responding to life as he does, okay? As he did when he was here and as he's showing us in his word. And when we respond to life, especially the challenges that come, okay, as Jesus did, okay, with his heart, which is the second thing that we want to gain, we gain by uh, accepting Jesus Christ, uh, through the Holy Spirit, he's going to continue to, mold our mind and our heart to respond like Jesus. And as we do, that's where you gain your blessings, okay? When you start living like Jesus, you won't have to look for a blessing. First and foremost, you'll be a blessing to bless other people. And in doing that, the Lord will bless you. He will open up doors that have been closed to you all your life. You can continue to fight and you can continue to resist. But I'm here to let you know that the situations that you have will continue to be there and some others will come into the midst of your life. So if you tune in next Sunday at 5 o'clock and you see that something else is coming, well, the Lord is already letting you know right now that that's coming, okay? And if you see that next Sunday, situations are still the same, well, the Lord has let you know right now that it's going to continue to be, okay? That hole that's in your soul, that hole that's in your heart, only one thing can peg and fill that eternally, and that's Jesus Christ. You can try to fill it with alcohol. You can try to fill it with drugs. You can try to fill it with all kinds of medications, all kinds of different relationships, all kinds of outings and situations. You can shop till you drop. You can go out until you broke. You can do all the things in this life to try to fill that one hole that only one thing fits it in the soul, okay? And in the end, die never filling it and that's jesus christ because that's what god in his words said fills that empty spot in man's soul jesus christ and when jesus come in and fills that empty hole he transforms our soul our soul is no longer the same okay it is transformed because jesus has come in it and it is jesus that fills it it is jesus that transforms it it is jesus and marks it and labels it as his, and it is uh, to Jesus whom we go, okay? Until then, our destination is hell. And to those that don't believe it, that mock it, okay, that laugh at it, that make jokes about it, all I can say is tune in next week, and you'll see me rising more in peace, okay? And I ask you, where are you at? And if you can truly say that that peg was filled by someone else, my email address is floating across this this uh, this segment. Please feel free to email me your name and your information, and I'll be more than happy to contact you. And even we can break bread over uh, over a lunch or a breakfast, and you can fill me in on what filled in that void. But be willing to, to be open to hear this right here as the thing as the one that can fill your your void in your soul. So, in saying that. Um, uh, one thing that Jesus ended chapter 14 with is that he said, he that has an ear to hear, let him hear. I pray that you're not only hearing this, but that it's going into your mind in the right place and that your heart has heard something, has heard a knock right now within these last 34 to 35 minutes that you, have, you not only look through the peephole, but you just opened it, okay? You open the door because you know who's on the other side and you're ready to open up that door. You know it's Jesus Christ knocking at the door 
of your heart, okay? Wanting to extend his hand to your soul and say, come, come, come with me, okay? I want to take you from your hurt. I want to take you from your pain and your sorrows. I want to take you from the torment that you're having in your mind. I want to take you from all the uneasiness and this heaviness you got in your heart. I want to take you away from all that you are experiencing in your life that is absolutely killing you day by day. And I want to take you to a new place. And this new place, I can guarantee you, you will not experience this. You will have conquering victory over this i will teach you i will lead you i will guide you and direct you through my holy spirit okay if you open up the door to jesus right now and say yes to him come and save me and yes let your spirit teach me let your spirit convict me let your spirit lead god and direct me let your spirit provide me the nourishment for my spirit and my soul okay each and every day so that i can experience what I see your servant, Pastor Joseph, experiencing and all the billions that are out here on earth that I have seen, okay, through the internet and through any other multimedia method, okay, and in my everyday life. Through those that I have seen, yes, there are some Christians that act a fool. Yes, there are some Christians that act like they're not saved. Yes, there are some Christians that are not shining Jesus Christ and they're shining more of the devil, okay? But hey, I'm here to tell you one thing. Just because we saved, don't mean we forgot how to sin. Just because we say we saved, maybe the heart is still in the world and never and it didn't give in. Our mouth spoke Jesus and invited Jesus. We came down after service, but our heart was still in the pews. Okay? So don't be so hard to judge and throw a rock at Christians. Do understand one thing. There is a rock, the rock in this world called Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, okay, that you can lean on, okay, and worry about the other Christians. My mom used to say, don't worry about nobody else, worry about you and the Lord, okay, because at the end, it's you and the Lord that's going to be on the other end, one-on-one, okay, at the end, it's the Lord that's going to look at you one-on-one, you ain't going to have that posse, you ain't going to have that entourage, you're not going to have those family, you ain't going to have all those folks by your side as you do right now, your money ain't going to count, your your lip service ain't going to count, okay? This hustle and this pimping ain't going to count, okay? Uh, you, keep, you, you ain't bringing no guns. You, you, ain't bring, you ain't bringing no ammunition, okay? You ain't bringing no titles, okay? Uh, he created that, that spirit and soul that's within you, okay? He created it. So if he created it, he has the power over it, and he certainly has the power to direct it on the other end. Why are you playing with this? Why are you playing with your life? Okay? Chapter 15, real quick. Um, we see the story of prodigal son. And there's only one thing that, the, that I want to touch on regarding this. Um, in chapter 15, verses 2, we see how the Pharisees and the scribes were complaining about Jesus hanging around with sinners and even, and, and even dining with them. He had an issue with Jesus being around what they call that sinful crowd. Like, they really thought that <laughs> they were walking around sinless. Like, they were just a perfect with God, okay? And that was an issue with, uh, with Jesus. But um, the way he answers this is threefold. One, okay, uh, having heard the, their complaint, he said, if any of them were to lose one of their hundred sheep would not they leave that 99 and go after that one that was lost until they find it and when they find it you know put it on their shoulders and come home rejoicing one sheep if they had lost one sheep okay would they not rejoice in finding that one sheep on through thick and thin okay twists and turns, no matter what it is in the wilderness, they ain't going to stop till they find that sheep. Bring them home rejoicing. Okay? Then in verse, and that's verses 4 through 7 of chapter 15. In verses 8 through 10, he spoke about a woman who had 10 silver coins, and I think a silver coin, I forgot, it was the equivalent of a week's salary or maybe a month's salary. I can't remember what it was, but she had 10 of them. 
And he said, if she had lost one, it says here in verse 8, would she not light a candle, sweep her house, check carefully until she found it? Verse 9, and when she found it, she would call her friends and her neighbors together saying, rejoice with me. I found the piece which I lost. One coin, one sheep, one coin. Chapter 14, we see one ox, one ass. Okay? We see how uh, the master sent his servants, said, go, invite. The house ain't full yet. Continue to invite. Okay? One sheep, one coin. Okay? And whoever here has an ear, let him hear. Okay? So one sheep, one coin. And now, in verse 11, we see one son. Okay? And there was a certain man who had two, two sons. Okay? And the younger decided, you know what? He came to his father and said, I want my portion of my inheritance. And in that culture, the younger would get a third, the older would get two thirds. Okay? And he said, basically, he was telling his dad, you ain't dying fast enough. You know, my inheritance was coming after your death. Well, this ain't happening fast enough. I got things to do. Got people to see, places to go. Got a life to roll and stroke. Okay? So since you ain't dead yet, just give me mine. I need to go. And the father divided it and gave him what was his. Okay? And it says not many days after that, I'm pretty sure, man, in this cell phone and, and, and technology that we have today, you get a boatload, you get a sack load, you're going to be calling the homies, the home homettes, you're going to be planning, renting, uh, planning trips, planning the hotels, casinos, who knows what. This man was loaded. Okay? You might plan a worldwide trip. You might plan parties. You might plan galas. First thing you're gonna do, you gotta go get right. You gotta get some threads. You gotta get some wheels. You, you gotta get. You gotta get a. You, you gotta get the right per, the right people around you. You you, you fitting on. You fitting on partying and living it up. You gonna be. You know. You gonna be the one. Okay. You gonna. You know. You gonna be the, the man or the woman. You gonna be the person in town that people want to be around. Okay. It's like all these little uh, reality shows with. People just they lost their mind. They follow people wherever they go. You know what I'm saying? Following at every footstep to everything that they do, <clears throat> no matter how idiotic it is, they're following them. Okay, you feel on being like that. You feel on being that main one. You're gonna have your you're gonna be the, the one that has the main reality show on this earth. Okay? The highest ratings ever, okay? And he he's planning for this, okay? And they said, okay, he went on a journey. Verse 13 says he gathered everything he had. Yes, in verse 13, he gathered everything he had and he bailed, okay? Far away, okay? Not around the corner, not, not to the next zip code, far away, okay? So he gathered everything about him that connected him to his father, okay? And he disconnected okay from his father okay he left his identity okay as one who belonged to the father okay and he decided to have a new direction in life okay so he left his position he left his identity and he created a new direction okay and it said in this new direction he wasted everything he had on Riotous living, you know, that's a lifestyle that's just wild, okay? Anything and everything goes. It's reckless and it's absolutely immorally sinful, okay? If he had to sleep with another man or 10 men and have him an orgy or the same thing with women or women and men, if he had to go puff, puff, pass all night for days and days and days, Drinky, 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 and have bad thinky, thinky, thinky. That's what he did. Okay? There was nothing churchy that was, you know, we use this word church. There was on Sundays, he got blitzed. Okay? He got lit. Okay? And he went out. He shook the dice. Okay? That was his life. I'm not saying specifically that's what he did because it doesn't attest to what he did. I'm just using the analogy of some of the things that we do today. Okay? Uh, we like to party, we like to drink, we like to get high, okay? We like to act a fool, 
We like to mistreat people. If you're a man, women, men, if you're a woman, try to uh, get over on men. Women with women, men with men, swapping both. Okay, married couples going into these places and swapping each other's and sharing each other's. All kinds of stuff going on, okay? He might have decided to go have him. I'm not saying that this happened with him, but some people, they get that they get that loaded. All of a sudden, they're not a man. They want to be a woman, okay? You know, uh, they, they want to buy 10 cars, okay? Never having one, they want to buy 10. They've they, they, they been living in, a, in an apartment. All of a sudden, they want this mansion up on a hill, and, and, and they want 50 rooms, and 49 of them ain't never going to be used, Okay? Uh, this is the kind of lifestyle that he that 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 goes on when I say wild, okay? You know, you, you're hanging all kinds of diamonds on your neck. I seen those fools at the Super Bowl hanging all these kind of diamonds around their neck. Like it 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 it, it gives them some kind of statement to the world. Like this is who I am. This is who you need to be. No, you know what? Who you need to be? What you need to be having wrapped around your neck is Jesus, okay? I, I'm sick and tired of people who say. I belong to Jesus, and all they portray when they have an opportunity on TV, on the internet, okay, during a game if you're an athlete, on stage if you're an entertainer, on the stage if you're a comedian, on the stage if you're an actor, okay, somebody that's well known in politics, okay, I am so sick and tired of people who have an opportunity to speak the name above all names and they give all glory and honor to that person and they shine it like that person is in them and, and living through them, okay? But no, all they do is they want to hang some bling around their neck, put some bling around their teeth, bling around their ears, you know, all this stuff in their face and hair, all these kind of threads. And then they call themselves saying, I give honor to God. What God are you talking about? Because this guy right here, that's not what he promoted. You got an opportunity to pick up a mic and you got and you can speak and you know millions of people are going to do this. They're going to they're gonna listen to you. And you got the audacity not to say, Jesus is who I think. Jesus is. It's who transformed me. Jesus is who blessed me. Jesus is the one who got me to win this championship. To have this career with records. To have this career as an actor. To have this fame and fortune. It is Jesus. But you don't do that. And all you do is want to hang more and more and shine more and more of yourself. Okay? You know what? When it comes time for Jesus... To utter your name on the other end, <laughs> don't be surprised if when he do, you're going to be blingless, you're going to be fameless, okay? You're going to be houseless, carless, okay? You're going to be entourageless, less, okay? And guess what you're going to be? You're going to truly be homeless, all right? But you're going to be soulless. Your soul going to be gone, okay? You're going straight to hell. You had an opportunity, but you were ashamed to say the name. You, you're a closet Christian. I heard a message today, and the guy said, Faith does not end within the confines of a wall of a sanctuary. Faith must travel with you. Faith must shine through you. Faith must reach through you onto others. But too many folks that are just out there just... They got an opportunity that, that the master said to the servant, go, invite. And we ain't inviting nobody. And then we wonder why the world is the way it is. Okay? Moving forward. The time is ticking here. All right, so he went out full and crash landed and was empty in every way. Okay? And... I want to say something. Well, I'm going to stop right here because we're going to have to pick this up next week. It was important to go to 14 just to tidbit highlight that there's an invitation. And that is an invitation for one person, for self, for you, for me, as it was in my past. Okay? And the Lord has the doors open. There's more, there's room. Room of plenty. Okay? If you're at a point right now Okay, where 
you've gone out of your way to regroup, okay, to rethink, to go recoup a loss in your life. And you've gone through leaps and hurdles. You've climbed mountains. You swam over oceans. You've walked across deserts. You've you flown to the moon, traveled out of space. You've done anything and everything to recoup. You know, and I'm just using illustrations. You have gone a tremendous way and done tremendous things to try to get your life, the losses of your life, you know, put back together, put your life back together. Okay, you have tried to put your life back together and you continue to flip-flop in one loss after another. You're not getting ahead. You don't see anything up ahead of hope. You don't see anything as you look around this thing called life. Nothing is shining. You just feel like you're in complete, utter darkness. You're lost. And you want a way out, okay? I ask this. What about the greatest loss that you are in, that you're going through right now? Okay? Not financial, not housing, not any kind of material, not any kind of relation, relationship with people down here. Not job, not housing, none of that. All of these losses is not what I'm talking about, okay? You could have lost your mind. I ain't talking about that either, okay? What about that one loss that you have yet to try to rethink, regroup, and go recoup, okay? The loss of your soul. There is no plan that you can put together to get that back. Your soul right now without Jesus is lost. It's lost in this world. Okay? It's and in the other side, it, it'll be lost to you. Okay? Because the place that you're going, it's not where God wants you. That's not where God is inviting you to come to. God is not inviting nobody in his holy word to hell. He ain't inviting nobody to hell. Okay? Even Judas, who did what he did. Okay? Ain't nowhere in scripture where Jesus invited him to hell. Jesus ain't inviting nobody to hell. He ain't welcoming nobody to hell. He ain't directing nobody to hell. He don't want nobody in hell. Okay? We putting ourselves in hell. We sending ourselves to hell. And we'll be jailed in hell and shackled down to hell. Why? Because we rejected Jesus. We tried everything that we couldn't see and reached to that. But we couldn't reach to Jesus because, well, I don't know. I don't have no proof. Yeah, you got proof. I'm living proof. Okay? I'm going through a lot of the things that you're going through even after I'm saved. Medically, in my mind, in my heart, in my life, finances, relationships. I got all those challenges that you have, except I have peace because I have the God of peace. Okay? The root of peace, Jesus Christ, in my heart and in my life. And each and every day elevating, increasing, so that in these turbulent times that are like this in my life, I can go through them just like this. No matter how turbulent they are, I can continue to sail through them like that. Just like we were talking about in the last couple of weeks before. I'm not sinking no more. In Jesus Christ, no matter how heavy, how turbulent the storms are, I am on top of the waters sailing. I don't care how bad it is, how much it rises, I'm still above all the waters of trouble in my life because I'm sailing in peace, okay, as I sail in Christ, led by God the Holy Spirit, okay, as I'm led by the God of peace and I have the God of peace in me and that peace increases, I am able to elevate and go through my challenges with more peace, okay, and you have that opportunity right now. You have done everything you can to, to, to combat the losses of your life in any and every way. You have cheated. You have neglected. You have misused, abused. You have taken shortcuts. You have bobbed and weaved. You've tried to avoid. Uh, you've tried to make excuses. You've tried to point, rationalize. You've done everything you can, okay, except one thing. Recoup the loss of your soul. Because Satan right now has your soul. And Satan will wind up in the lake of fire. And anybody that is attached to late to Satan, rolling and strolling with him, is going to the lake of fire. Why are you following the dead? Okay? Why are you following the dead? Okay? He's already been judged. He's to be dead. Okay? Down the road. 
Why are you following the dead when you can follow the living, which is Jesus Christ? Okay? You have that opportunity to recoup your soul if you turn. Turn if you break it down, T-U-R-N. If you turn from that trap life, that's your T. Okay? If you turn from that upside down life, that is the U. If you turn from that ruined life, that's the R. And if you turn from the end, no hope in life. Okay? You turn from that and you turn to Jesus right now by saying, Lord, as in the beginning of the sermon, I open up my heart to you. I come to you as a sinner, Jesus, and I know that you, you have pardoned me of all my sins if I come to you just like that by faith that I know you took my sins to the cross and you washed them away. And, and I believe that and I want to receive that. And I ask that because I want to receive you, Jesus. Come into my life. Save me from sinking. Save me, O oh Lord, from being out like this prodigal son, wasting my life, okay? And making the decisions that take my soul further and further with Satan down to the lake of fire. And save me from that, O oh Lord, and raise me up so that I can sail to the seashores of glory. I give my heart to you. Take my soul and save it, O oh Lord. I believe that you did that on the cross and on the third day you rose, O oh Lord. You put a stamp of approval on what you did on Friday and you gave me a hope on Sunday. And if you repeated that right now, if you can repeat that right now, you are saved. You are in the prestigious body of Christ. But now what you need to do is have your mind and your heart become more like Jesus and you do that each and every week okay you can appear here there are other people that pastor on on the internet on the radio on TV you got pastors as long as they believe in the Bible they teach the Bible and they're centered in Jesus Christ you're off to a good start um, I'm Pastor Joseph from the Lighthouse I'm here every Sunday at 5 o'clock um, if you need a pastor more than happy you can email me your information I'll either respond to you via the email or your telephone. You can meet however you want to do it. Um, I'm here for you. Um, but uh, this is just something real quick that the Lord wants to share with the story of the prodigal. We weren't going into the prodigal as it, as it typically was. It was just this area here where, you know, you ask for all that you want and then you make a mess out of it. But God wants to create the best through that mess, okay? And that's only with Jesus Christ. The prodigal son has shown something that we all do, okay? He departed from somewhere, okay? And it, it says, as he departed from somewhere, what happened here was he was, uh, he was heading to nowhere, okay? He was heading into the world. Away from his father, away from that grand, and that father is a is a is, is symbolic for God the Father, okay? And he was heading to nowhere, having departed from somewhere, okay? That someone was the father. He did, he left the father. He left himself, okay? And he went from light to dark. He went from his relationship with the father, which is symbolic of God the Father, because when this man reached rock bottom, he he came back to himself and said, you know what? I'll be willing to come back as a servant, not a son, okay? And I and and and, and his serv my father's servants had food because this man was without food. Nobody was helping him. Nobody was giving anything to him, okay? He hit rock bottom, okay? And in coming back, they said the father seen him from a distance. Father's waiting, been waiting all these years, but that he was gone, okay? And he just couldn't, he, he did the unthinkable as a Jew and just ran out there. They weren't supposed to run out there in, 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 in public, okay? And he he embraced him. He kissed him. He hugged him, you know? And he threw a banquet for him, a, a big feast, okay? And he put on the great, a great robe, ring, and shoes. He, he reattached him. He reconnected him back. He brought, he gave him back the identity, okay, that he had, okay? And that's all God wants to do right now. His arms are open to you waiting to embrace you, okay? He's, he's, he's coming to you right now, okay? He's knocking, he's pleading, he's calling to you. Give him a chance. My name is Pastor Joseph again from the Lighthouse. I love you, and I'll be back here with the Lord's grace again next Sunday at 5 o'clock. Be blessed.